So I'm going to go over how to do something just once in Spark. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, and it's a pattern I end up using a lot in my projects. Uh, it's super useful. Um, I generally use it for setting defaults on certain values, and I'll, I'll go over that. Um, but before I do, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Inelli Bikes. Um, except not really, they aren't my sponsor. Uh, you guys are my sponsors, and you help me stay off the streets um, so I can keep making Spark videos. Uh, if you can throw me a dollar a month, or five, or even six thousand, uh, I'll really appreciate it, and um, it'll make me make more videos. Uh, so, digging into this, uh, we just need a couple of logic patches. Um, we're going to grab a pulse. Uh, so if you're not familiar, a pulse is um, it's like a an event. So it's like a uh, I don't know. It just happens immediately and then it goes away. Um, but then you can you can turn these into um, values uh, with a, a switch. The switch outputs a boolean value, so on or off, true, false. Um, so if we pipe this into here. So this is turned on, and then we're going to turn on the switch. Makes sense. Straightforward. Uh, so if you have this checked on um, initially, it will send a pulse initially to the switch. So value. I'm going to put a value here just so you can see what the output is. So you can see if I restart the project, it sends the pulse and then sets this value to true. Um, so the way I've been using this, I'm going to call this boolean use defaults because I want to know whether or not um, I should be using the default values or the values that the user interaction um, or user input has given me. Um, so this is, is just there. It's not going to be connected to anything. Um, but this other pulse is going to be the trigger that changes this value to false. Um, so we're going to say when this gets turned on, we're actually going to flip this switch off and then use defaults will be false. So you can get this pulse from a lot of places. You can have a timer running. You can have, um, let's say, I don't know, I, I usually use a user input. So let's do, uh, what is it called? Screen pan. So let's say when the user does a screen pan, that's gonna be the signal for us to um, switch this off. So if we refresh, that is true. And then you can see as soon as we do a screen pan, it sends the pulse and sets this value to false. So if you want to go and actually do something with this, you can pipe it into an if then else. Um, so let's say I'm going to do this with a vector two because screen pan you get um, you can get a vector two that tells you what the screen position is, or where the finger is on the screen. Um, so like by default, you might want to have um, like the the center of the screen. So if somebody is touching the very center of the screen, that would be 0.5 and 0.5. Um, the problem with the screen pan output is that it it starts off at uh, 0, 0, um, which is like the far edge of where the user would be um, panning to. So it, it doesn't always make sense to have that as the starting value because um, it's on the extreme edge. Um, so I am, um, that's, I mean, this, this is it. That's how to do something once. Um, but I'm going to keep going with this and show you, um, actually what it looks like in action. So set up something pretty simple, um, just a canvas and a rect. Uh, it doesn't need to be full screen. I'll just leave it. Um, and then I'm going to make a material. 
don't have any lights, so it's black, so I'll make it flat. And then I'm going to use uh, the, the screen pan position to change the color of the plane. Um, so to do that, I mean, you, you can probably stop watching here. This is a, if you just need to know this then that's it, but I just figure it's good to give some context, um, and to like how I actually use this stuff. Uh, so 2d position is going to be divided. So right now I'm just getting um, a normalized value for uh, where the finger is on the screen. So um, this 2D position is in screen pixels and then screen size is also in screen pixels. So if we divide, uh, yeah, that's gonna be on top. If we divide those two, then we get a, a normalized value. So I'm just gonna pipe that out so we can see what it's doing. Uh, so now you can see on the screen, if I go all the, all the way to the right, uh, that's X is one, and then all the way top, uh, you can see Y is zero, all the way to the bottom, Y is one. Um, so that makes it way easier to work with than, than these actual pixel values, because uh, those, those change um, per device. Um, so to, to use these defaults, I'm gonna pipe this into else on this patch. Um, so by default, it will use 0.5 and 0.5, which is the center of the screen. Um, and then when the user actually interacts, it will pick up these values. Um, so to demonstrate, the value patch is great, by the way. Um, if you just wanna see what's going on in your patch graph uh, before you know you get all the way to the end of the road and like actually connect it to stuff. Um, so, uh, vector two, that'll let us see it. So if I restart, you can confirm those are both 0.5 and then it switches as soon as I tap. Super cool. Um, I literally use this like on every project. So I hope you guys will find use for it. Um, so like to get, to get a color value out of this, I'm just going to use a swizzle. So X, X, Y, we only have X and Y, so we're just going to do X, Y, zero, one. So that, that would equate to RGB alpha. So middle of the road is green. And then you can see when I pan around, it changes. That's pretty much it. Um, pretty simple technique, just a couple of um, pulse patches um, and a switch, essentially. Um, but yeah, it's something I find myself doing uh, multiple times in every project. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel and uh, I'll see you in the next one.